This is American Issues Take Two. We're talking about another embarrassing lease of, leak of classified data. Uh, and, the, and the tagline is, why can't we protect our national secrets? This has happened before and it has happened again. We need to understand what our vulnerabilities are. The Washington Post reported um, that they were getting close. They were doing some wonderful reporting on this. They're getting close to find out who the members of the gamer group were um, that might have been responsible. And surely, uh, just a few hours later, the newspapers, the Times and the Post both reported that a fellow named uh, Jack Teixeira had been taken into custody as the primary suspect um, for leaking the information with the Air National Guard. Massachusetts. Uh, we'll know more about this as time goes by, but it's hot. And for this discussion, uh, we're going to have Tim Apicella, Stephanie Stolt Dalton, and, and Jeff Portnoy right now. Okay, we're back for a very, very important discussion about a very immediate issue. Uh, Tim, so th- they arrested this guy, um, and he is the primary sp- suspect. And we get to know from the newspapers, from the Washington Post and the Times, a bunch of young kids, and uh, this fellow Texera was uh, in the National Guard, and, and he had a little gamer group going on, on uh, a gamer site called Discord, which I can tell you more about. But uh, what does this all mean? I mean? This is the strangest kind of confluence. This is not an external actor. This is right here at home, inside our military. What are your reactions? Oh, uh, my reactions is um, there's too many people that have access. You got a 20 year old young adult who has access to the most sensitive documents, not only access, but apparently was able to fold the documents and take of a, a secured room uh, only to be copied or transcribed and or photographed later on for his little chat game um, extravaganza. Uh, too many people have access to these documents, obviously, and obviously the protocols are not being followed they're probably well in place but they're not being followed so um where i come from um heads would roll yes sir oh stephanie let me go to you the same question um you know what is what 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 comes to mind on this we we've lost a lot of intelligence here we've been embarrassed uh, you know for the third time in recent years um and um we we, what is our reaction uh you do you agree with tim I certainly agree with Tim. Good point. I think that um, for decades or even maybe since it came out, the Xerox machines, copiers are are very easily accessible wherever I have worked in, in a variety of places. And I even found one person was copying a book on it. And uh, so people are in there at night a day. So, so I, as Tim said, the, the access to this material is, is at way too low a grade level or pay level. So I believe um, there should be some concern. I think we were, we're all concerned. I mean, is this the next one since Snowden? Uh, but these people are not only violating the copyrights uh, permissions um, and, and, of course, you know, going against what, what are their um, duties to be uh, careful about security. They're in these groups. Why, why has it, this person was in a 20 to 30 people group? You mentioned the Discord. Jay might tell us more about that later. But I read about this his own group that he led, the Thud Shaker Central Group that he's a part of. So here are, you know, 30 people that are fiddling around with these ideas and then taking it to the next level whenever they're in the mood. And that seems to be what this alleged leaker has done. It's uh, totally out of line with any any employment agreement he has with him. Let, let me go to you, Jeff. You know, back in, in the Snowden day, um, what was interesting in the press was that there were 2.5 million people in this country uh, held top, top secret clearances. That's extraordinary. It struck me as, as multiples of the number of people uh, who had top secret clearances when I was in the service, but that was in the 60s and the 70s. Um, so uh, what's interesting now is the newspaper reports that um, even after the experiences we've had with Julian Assange and with Snowden, um, the number of top secret clearances has not reduced. It's been increased. It's now 4.2 million people have these clearances. Um, something is wrong in Mudville. Don't you agree? Well, you know, Trump had these documents in Mar-a-Lago. What's the big deal? 
I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not as excited about it as you are. I mean, uh, if you think a 20-year-old got access, you don't think the Chinese and the Russians have had this all along? I mean, come on. We're talking about a pimply acne kid at 20 years old, and you're thinking the Chinese and the Russians don't have the same documents? I mean, you got to really be naive to think that that this stuff is not already known to our so-called adversaries. And secondly, if the government told the truth about some of these things, it wouldn't be that big a deal. I mean, what we're learning is what we've been told about the war in Ukraine is a bunch of lies and misstatements. I mean, I think I, I'm more interested in what misrepresentations we've been handed by the government when somebody goes ahead and leaks. So, you know, I'm not that excited about it. I don't disagree, by the way, that there's a serious flaw in our system when, as you point out, a 20-year-old guy who used to be in the National Guard or whatever can get access and then share it with his friends in a chat room. I mean, there's a serious, serious problem. But I'm not so sure that's the biggest problem that arises from something like this. Well, would you, would you, uh, yes, I, I won't argue that a lot of the intelligence um, available is going to be in the hands of the Chinese and the Russians, who are very Akamai about these things. But I guess the, the problem that I would pose to you is what about our allies who are offended? Now, some of them are good sports. You know, Poland, for example, uh, issued a statement this morning saying, we understand mistakes are made and, you know, in, in keeping intelligence secret, so we don't no. blame the United States. But others may be kind of ticked off at us, and that changes our foreign policy. It changes our foreign relations. Isn't that a problem beyond what she knows and what Putin knows? Yes, but if any government thinks that we're able to keep our secret secret, they're being naive. I mean, first of all, much of this was probably shared, except the embarrassing things when, you know, we say stupid things about other countries. Uh, and, and again, you know, I'm not belittling, you know, releasing the names of, uh, of uh, CIA agents. We're not talking about that uh, at the moment. And I, I, you know, clearly that or putting people's lives in danger, which was the argument used against Snowden, yeah. uh, although I don't believe anybody was ever assassinated. I mean, there's always this, oh, my God, overreaction. But the one thing I full agreement is what the heck's going on with our security system, whether it's NASA or the CIA or whatever secret organizations the government has, when somebody like that can get access to material that he never should have access to. What was his job? Uh, I don't know. Communication. He was a communications specialist. Communicating he, with who? Foreign governments, or no? He was no. He was a facilitator to allow communication of of um, you know military messaging. Messaging, and so he did. He was. He didn't um, actually get involved substantively. It's just that it passed through his hands. That's that's a, a problem. Yeah. No. And look, it, it, it's obviously a serious problem when material is easily accessed by four and a half million people. And, yeah. uh, you know, that exposes a flaw. But it's not the first time that me, those flaws me, uh, have been exposed. Let me go to you, Tim. You know, the, the very interesting intersection of this is Discord. Uh, let me take a moment and tell you that I have become familiar with Discord because I am interested in uh, AI, artificial intelligence. And one of the big programs uh, that have come out in the past month or two, and that's all that it's been, is called Mid Journey. Mid Journey um, creates graphics. You you feed in a description of what kind of graphic you want, and amazingly, Mid Journey will give you a graphic um, that that comports with that description. Um, but what's interesting is to use Mid Journey, you have to have um, Discord. It's an odd name, actually. And Discord allows you to see what other people on a given server have created using MidJourney. <clears throat> so they work hand in glove. Discord is an enabler. Uh, it's, a, it's a chat room thing where uh, you can see what, what thousands of people are doing and learn. 
and learn from that. Um, but the mid-journey server has nothing to do with, with what was going on with this guy, Teixeira. Um, there are other servers, many other servers, many other chat rooms uh, that are operating with millions of people, 150 million uh, installs, as I understand it. Jay, Jay, it's good to know that you're on the dark web. I always <laughs> thought that was a possibility, and now you've made an admission. <laughs> I think I need a lawyer. <laughs> hey, there happens to be one in the room. So I've had it. Yeah, you got another client. It'll let him yeah, well, Jeff is, Jeff is still a First Amendment guy, no matter what. <laughs> so, Tim, you know, the intersection here, it goes beyond, I think, what Jeff was saying, you know, and what you were saying. And we have a problem in terms of securing our uh, security information and but the other part is that when you put when you when you when you connect both of these things up, um, the fact that you know millions of people have security clearances and a lot of them are young who don't really understand what's happening in the world um, and who join these chat rooms and who think it's all kind of a game. That's what Discord is. It's a gamer server site. Um, then you get a sort of a double whammy. Uh, do you agree with that? Well, I don't know enough about it. So um, I'll, I'll agree just to say I agree. I, I think there's a dot here that needs to be connected, and that is the erosion of, of credibility for the United States. Um, I'll just take us down a little history walk. Uh, when Daniel Ellsberg released the Pentagon Papers and what incredible damage that did to the credibility of, of the government telling the truth about Vietnam and the fact that we were winning the war, which in where we were not winning the war, not by a long shot. Or I'll talk about um, the Iraq invasion that was propagated upon lies about uh, Saddam Hussein having nukes. And now we have uh, detailed information about Ukraine and uh, painting a, a not so rosy picture, yet the media has been painting a rosier picture. So it's all about credibility of the United States and its ability to communicate the truth to the American public. Uh, that's the bigger dot that needs to be connected. And if this continues, um, no one's ever going to believe what the government says. Well, you know, I, you know, one thing that we really have to uh, address here, and I'd like to ask you about this, Stephanie, is uh, can the United States remain uh, a world power? Uh, can it remain a free society um, when it cannot keep secrets? Don't you have to be able to keep secrets? And I'm not judging what secrets are keepable and what are not. I'm just saying, don't we have to have the ability to keep secrets in order to be a world power to achieve our global goals? Well, I, that's a great question. I, I mean, certainly, this is, would relate to our policy making um, as well as to um, our our capacity to protect ourselves. I, I mean, that's. That that's what's completely astounding is that these people have access somehow to these servers and to this activity because this takes some time. But I've also come to understand that there's a big payday for all of this. I mean, I recently heard from a Bulgarian colleague who, who's been called by people in Bulgaria asking him just to send some drones, you know, like the kind you take pictures with, because they they want the drones to like carry a grenade over and drop it at wherever they want to drop it. But and and, the, and they're willing to pay anything for this material for the for that kind of protection, and then certainly for this information, I am sure. Sure, there's plenty of money out there to support obtaining these documents from people that are factless and sitting at these computers. Well, there was, there was no waiting. money here, not that, we, not that we know of yet. But there is a war going on, Jeff. Can you conduct or support parties to a war no, without I, being able to keep I, it secret? No, I, I don't think anybody's going to disagree about the importance of keeping secrets. But But that doesn't mean that you can lie. To the public, I mean that—that's the disconnect. I don't think clearly you got to keep secrets, important secrets, the names of undercover spies, uh, although you can't use that word anymore, and you know, secret diplomacy and, and stuff like that. Well, I well, agree with take, that. Let's take the one that really bothered the Ukrainians, where we said, you know, they were vulnerable; they didn't have the ammunition; um, that they were not likely to win the spring offensive. Um, and made them look like they were weak. 
And, and of course, part of you know their program is not to look weak, even if they are weak. Now, this all came out. This has an effect on the war. Not not you know even if you say that Vladimir Putin knew all of this, he knew well, the Ukrainians what? are weak. It's the others who might support or not support the Ukrainians. What, what was might that? Provide the ammunition yeah. and the fighter planes and the tanks. What was the movie? Was it Dogs of War? That talked about misinformation. Uh, Hell, that wagged the dog. That wagged the dog. Oh yeah, same thing, same movie. Uh, I'm just dyslexic. I just uh, mixed it up. Um, you know, I I, 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 I don't think. I mean, I know I don't disagree with you that secrets are critical, and that this is this should never have happened. And you know, heads are going to roll somewhere, and then it'll happen again five years from now. Uh, but but it exposes both to the people of this country and to the world lies that we have been telling people Give me an example. internally and externally. Yeah. And yeah, it's tremendous embarrassment. As you say, Poland's kind of been a nice neighbor by saying, oh yeah, you know, these mistakes are made. They probably are made in Poland. Should they be made in the United States? I think it's inexcusable. And, and, and it just shows you how vulnerable our system is who, to well, these who, kinds of hacks. Who's at fault? I mean, if, if Congress, Congress will politicize this issue, guaranteed, and, and that means... Oh, they're going to blame the president, of course. Yeah, well, and, and, the, and the Democrats will blame Trump for, you know, the systems that were improved. Um, but who is actually at fault from what we know? Because um, you know, the reality is that uh, Lloyd Austin got up a couple of days ago and said, we are going to bend every effort to find out who these people are. And now they have. So what? I'm saying I don't think they have. Because what happened is the Washington Post did the investigation. They really got down on it uh, more than the Times, as far as I can see. And then almost immediately thereafter, the FBI, that's the Department of Justice, not the Department of Defense, made an arrest. Um, so, you know, query, what exactly did the DOD do here? I'm not impressed yet. Maybe I'll be impressed later. How about you? Who's at fault? You. Okay. I mean, you know, I mean, we can pick anybody. I mean, they're going to take the low-hanging fruit and make them pay. That's the reality. They're not going to get to the people that no. allowed this to happen, that designed they've the got, system. They've got to do something. They've got to do something. So... <laughs> You know, the, the problem, as I mentioned earlier, is the intersection of information on social media. It's different than it was even in Snowden's time. And certainly uh, in, in Julian Assange, um, it's different. And, and query, how are we going to handle this? We, we don't have a clue on social media. We don't even know what Facebook does. Congress has never taken any action against or to regulate any of these social media companies. And now we have social media eating our lunch. Um, so would you go after social media? For what? For this guy leaking the documents and Something playing some wrong. game? Yeah. Yeah. We had no control over what he was doing. None. Yeah. Well, that's whose fault is that, to ask your question? Well, maybe it means Congress has to assert some Do control. what? Do I, what? I don't know. We'll have an investigation, you and me. <laughs> hey, Jay. Yeah, Tim. Let me jump in. You know what? When the CIA has a leak, they sit everyone down under a polygraph and start asking questions. So you just start working your way up the ranks because you're right. This 21 year old didn't come by these documents just by 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 happenstance. No, it's true. But, you know, th there was this uh, cell, this this uh, group of a couple of dozen <clears throat> young people like this. And, and most of them thought it was a kind of joke. Most of them thought it was a game, like Discord has. Discord is a gamer's site. Well, to use Jeff's terminology, this pimple-faced kid, 21-year-old kid, was feeding his ego by sharing uh, classified documents. Yeah. Hey, guys, look what I got access yeah. to. Exactly. That's, exa that's exactly <laughs> right. But we cannot afford to have that happen. And it, it's more sophisticated well, now. Well, you better start talking to the generals and the uh, colonels and the majors, because... 
They're allowing that to happen. But, but, okay, uh, Stephanie, you had a point. Jay, I have a point. The, to me, it it re resonates the the archives problem. Okay, that all these presidents and people and that have worked for the the executive branch have these documents. All of a sudden, you find out you have a document in a box of things you opened up when you thought all this stuff was put in a store, you know, uh, archival storage with accession numbers and sealed boxes. And I mean, there, there there's this going on all the time in the executive branch. And then you find out, well, no. Oh, I mean, these documents are also all these other places. So the question to me is, who, what is this? As as you all have asked, it, it's a it's an executive branch problem um, for the, the secret and top secret documents. The the um, archives has got to expand here and do something about their systems of tracking and storage and uh, rotating these documents around. And then plus the issue that's coming up in the discussion is who gets them, who's going to see them. And the other issue is, of course, what needs to be classified. Most of this stuff is certainly not going to turn any heads that's classified top secret. You know, it may, may not be that all that are classified that way are warranted. So I, I'm seeing that this is a big project that needs to get started. And then also how do people get access to um, to uh, these servers that they're not supposed to be on. Where's the oversight for who this 21 year old kid get gets to access? Why are there not firewalls well, he, against he all had, of He had legitimate access and, and well, he NSA, I it. mean, NSA I, I want to go to Jeff about the, his yeah. comment about this kid who was pimply faced kid. By the way, we have no evidence that he was pimply faced <laughs> or anything else about his complexion. But let me say this, you know, there's an additional thing here. It's the attitude of this guy, these guys in the group, you know, in the, in the um, social media group. Um, and there's a, an attitudinal thing about him. He was apparently, he is apparently a religious zealot. He's conservative, right wing. Um, now, he may be, you know, young and stupid. He might even be acne faced. Um, but the fact is, an attitudinal thing exists here, not only for him but for the others involved in that group who spread around the information. So we have a country. Well, I guarantee he wasn't the prom king. I mean, let's just be honest. It's somebody who spends 24 seven in front of his computer. Unfortunately, we're developing a large portion of our young population that that's all they do. Right. They communicate on their computer. They don't have an ability to communicate face to face. Right. They spend 24 seven. And that's what we're living with these days, Jay. Right. That's the country. And it's an attitudinal thing. And it's a, all a big game. And in fact, they, in the article, they made reference to of these various games that are happening. And some of these kids, they're not all in the military. You know, Takshara, he's in the military. But what I'm saying is the. It's an attitudinal thing where they kind of um, they in they they uh, they conflate, um, you know, the games and the fiction and the fun and the social media, which which the social media. What what did one guy said? They asked him. The FBI asked him. You know, why did you do this? Why did you you know? Why did you why did you re re resend this information? Uh, oh, and he said, I'm never going to tell you who the principal sender was. And they said, why are you not going to tell us? And he said, because he's my best friend. Well, he never met the man. They were buds on online. They were buds in social media. We have a reorganized social structure in the country. And mm -hmm. uh, whether they were in the military or not in the military, you know, the young pimply faced group, in fact, were ignorant about, you know, public affairs, public policy, and foreign relations. And they held, and maybe still do hold, the keys to the kingdom. So I think this helps us recognize the changes that you talk about in our society, in the way it works, in the way people treat, may I say, treat the government, treat the national interest. Because for them, they don't have a clue how important that is, and they don't seem to care. Well, I don't know, because the last game I played was Pac-Man. So I'm not too sure I understand what games are on the web. <laughs> but we have, uh, we have to do remedial remedial work with you. But does it is it is it is it an, a, 
an important fact that he's a conservative religious zealot? I mean, yes. I, uh, I, I, yes, I, think, I mean, I will find out more, but we may find out that he's an yeah. ordinary old fashioned Trumper. And, he, and so he shouldn't have access because of that. Uh, Is that I what you're saying? I, uh, no, I'm not going to. That's that pretty conclusion. elitist, Jay. That's pretty elitist. Well, I, I let me say, as a matter of principle, if I were the general in charge and I knew that somebody had those propensities, I would not want them handling national secrets. Yeah, well, that comes up. But that that's brings me now. That just brings up a whole other subject. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right. Tim, you, um, what about that? What about that <laughs> intersection? What about these kids who are playing games and don't have a clue and conflate, you know, fiction and nonfiction and don't seem to care if it affects the national interest? Well, I'm with Jeff. You know, these kids are spending too much time in front of the computer <clears throat> making quote unquote friendships and they've never met in person. Uh, the bottom line is our technology is outrunning our cultural norms and we can't keep up with it. And that's the bottom, bottom line. And until we start putting um, a little bit of thought into how we're operating our society and how we're operating the rules of our society, uh, you can expect a whole lot more of this and a lot worse. Oh, I know. I hear what you're saying. We have to get Congress to have hearings. No, I didn't say Congress because they're do nothings. Well, who, who then? Uh, you. I thought it was you or maybe Stephanie. No, you, Thank Jay. You. You know, that, that's the problem. You right? should. Congress, you Congress started to investigate Facebook a couple of years ago during the Trump administration. And um, what's his name came down there and confused them all. And the staffers were confused and the committees got nowhere and they put it on the back shelf for a year. And then presumably they would be more Akamai about, you know, what was going on. It could ask better, better questions. Um, and, and it happened again. Zuckerberg came back and confused them again. And the, the, the bottom line there was that nothing ever happened. There's been no regulation. Congress is not up to this. This is specialized. This is high tech. This requires a lot of training and experience and, and focus, which Congress doesn't have even on its best nonpartisan day. Problem. Well, okay. Like I said they're a dupe, well, to do nothings. That's what I said. Well, I, I just think we need to get in there and get get it uh, under uh, corralled, leashed. We have to, the, even at the NSA and at these other defense agencies, um, there needs to be a review of by Congress or a select committee or by the executive branch, Biden. Um, they, we need to find out who, who and what has access to what there is in there. Uh, lots and, of where, and that, that, but, but I don't see going at it bit. It's got to be overhaul. These 20 year olds are sitting there in front of computers that are powerful and have access. And the archives isn't even keeping track of its own documentation. And I have no doubt that what, but what uh, Trump was doing and looking through that material was he was looking for big, big buck re reserves. He could get his hands well, on. Well, my final comment is I think this is a task for think tech. <laughs> I think think tech should undertake an investigation. Your committee and, chair, welcome and to it. This and provide the meeting of the investigation. And right provide right its now. findings to Congress. And we can then hope that this will never happen again. That's my fervent there, prayer. There's a hope. But let, let me go to one question I really meant to ask you. And Are that, we becoming I'm, a special? How long is the show going on today? Uh, and, and, well, Jeff, when you're on, it's always. <laughs> I mean, we only get paid for 30 minutes and, right. you know, overtime. The check, the check is in the mail. Time you, and a half. You, you said that one of the big problems is the government doesn't tell the truth. Okay? And so um, let's say that we agree, um, and, you know, and, and that gets, this gets past the need to keep things secret. And that what, what you don't want is the government making affirmative misstatements of fact. Um, and so that later, you know, we find that maybe it was not telling the truth. How do you do that, Jeff? Where do you start? What, what, what's the first step on, on, on changing no, national never... policy so the government always tells the truth? It's never going to change. So why, why even speculate? It's not going to happen. It's the way government works, and that's the way it is. 
I mean, you can have oversight committees and occasionally, historically, after something has happened, there's an oversight committee and you learn that what you had been told was untrue. Example A, the Vietnam War, but we can go through multiple, multiple other things. That's the way it is. I don't get excited about it. I don't expect to be told the truth. Well, you know, one thing we seem to have learned, uh, maybe not all of us, uh, during the Trump administration, is that truth counts. Facts count. <laughs> well, they do, but... <laughs> and, and fact, and if you don't have facts, you can't have a democracy. We, I think we've learned that. So how do we correct that? Because this is an extension of that same notion. You have untrue statements and they create problems when they're released. Well, uh, how do we make a democracy? Uh, how do we keep a democracy by making sure that the only thing government issues is true? I, Never mind. I, well, withdraw the, I withdraw the question. <laughs> I have one more comment on that question, which is it goes both ways, because as we've referenced the movies, there was a movie early on called War Games, in which some pre-adolescents or early adolescents launched the, the nuclear warheads. And so, it, as I'm saying, it's going both ways. So this way, we're getting people go in and get out what they want to get at or have a uh, uh, you know, uh, some kind of motivation to obtain and get rewarded for. It also can go the other way, is that the, the system can be mishandled and we can start something really big. So it's a huge, huge challenge. Oh, yeah. Well, the other, the other challenge, which I think has, has come out and is Lloyd Austin and, and Tony Blinken's biggest challenge, is to try to make peace um, and, you know, ruffle, uh, you know, smooth the ruffled feathers of all the people that we have offended um, by this release. Um, to me, that's very important. And so the, the question is, uh, and we're almost finished, Jeff, just to stand by and ask your client to stand by. Okay? Clients are important. I'll go on record about that. Um, so let me ask you this, Tim. You know, what, how important is that? What can we do? Can we ever ruffle those feathers or unruffle them? Oh, I think the genie's left the bottle here. So I'm with Jeff. I'm, I'm with Jeff. We should always expect not to hear the truth from our government, but let's keep it to a minimum. Um, and again, there's just far too much access to has these 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 um, confidential, sensitive documents. Restrict the heck out of that and just move forward. Absolutely. Okay, we're out of time, and Jeff and his client have to go. Uh, next time, Jeff, I suggest you get you know get your client on a second chair and have him and have him speak also on these subjects or her, and uh, and maybe they'll agree with the, bo the bottom line is, I am in great demand. <laughs> and, you know, I have to juggle all of these people that want my time. Well, you're, and you're, and you're, because, because of my relationship and my love for you, I always try to put you somewhere near the top. <laughs> Jeff, you're Jeff. here. When the, when the investigation good, committee is established, we need you to serve. Oh, by the way, am I telling the truth? We'll never know, will we? <laughs> but we'll good. defend your right to say it, whatever it is. That's right. All right. I think we got to go now because I, I don't want you walking <laughs> off the stage. Uh, thank you, Tim. Thank you, Stephanie. And thank you, too, Jeff. That was oh, a lot of fun. It always is. Great seeing you guys. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo. You, you know, the, the fire is going and uh, others are going to pick it up. We need to do something about this or we're very vulnerable. Well, you know, I, I know it's a guy named Reed. I forget his first name. He's a Democrat. Uh, he's on the armed forces, the Senate armed forces. And he was making statements this morning about how he was going to get to the bottom of it and they're going to make him pay. And so, uh, you know, I, I think this is to your point, Tim. It's not, it's not so much that we hang somebody, you know, by the short ones. 
Um, that, that's not going to solve the problem. I mean, put him in jail, you know, make it a lifetime. You know. The problem is how you stop this from happening, because that's much more difficult than finding the, the culprit, you know, the culprit of the party and punishing him. Uh, that, that, you know, sure you have a certain level of deterrence for the next guy who might think of doing something like this, but it doesn't stop it. It